Acts 1. Dear Theophilus, in my first book I told you about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he ascended to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions from the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. On these occasions, occasions, he talked to them about the kingdom of God. In one of these meetings, as he was eating a meal with them, he told them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what he promised. Remember, I have told you about this before. John baptised with water, but in just a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. When the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, are you going to free Israel now and restore our kingdom? The Father sets those dates, he replied, and they are not for you to know. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It was not long after he said this that he was taken up into the sky while they were watching and he disappeared into a cloud. As they were straining their eyes to see him, two white-robed white robed men suddenly stood there among them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there staring at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, and someday, just as you saw him go, he will return. The apostles were at the Mount of Olives when this happened, so they walked the half mile back to Jerusalem. When they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying, here is the list of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all met together continually for prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. During this time, on a day when about 120 believers were present, Peter stood up and addressed them as follows. Brothers, it was necessary for the scriptures to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided the temple police to arrest Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit speaking through King David. Judas was one of us chosen to share in the ministry with us. Judas bought a field with the money he received for his treachery and falling there he burst open, spilling out his intestines. The news of his death spread rapidly among all the people of Jerusalem and they gave the place the Aramaic name Akel Dama, which means field of blood. Peter continued, This was predicted in the book of Psalms where it says, let his home become desolate, with no one living in it. And again, let his position be given to someone else. So now we must choose another man to take Judas's place. It must be someone who has been with us all the time that we were with the Lord Jesus. From the time he was baptised by John, until the day he was taken from us into heaven. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they all prayed for the right man to be chosen. O oh Lord, they said, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen. As, a, as an apostle to replace Judas, the traitor in this ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and in this way, Matthias was chosen and became an apostle with, with the other eleven. Here are some of my thoughts on this passage. Acts 1 feels like an introduction to a newly planted church. The author of Acts also wrote the Gospel of Luke, and the opening verse of Acts describes that the Gospel of Luke um, is about all that Jesus began to do and teach, and therefore implies that Acts is about the continuation of Jesus' work. 
it introduces what instructions he gave his followers for when he was gone. He said, stay in Jerusalem initially. Wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when you do, you will receive my power. And you will be witnesses, not just to people like you, but in in Jerusalem, but also to your neighbours in Samaria and the ends of the earth. Then Jesus leaves and is taken up before their very eyes. And I think it's quite a comical scene, imagining them struggling to comprehend what has happened as they stare up to the clouds until two angels make it very clear to them and encourage them to move on. And then we get to hear what the first few days of this newly planted church was like. Discovering how to to do church without any books or audio um, podcasts to listen to. We hear that they gathered in an upstairs room. The the disciples, maybe their wives, Mary the mother of Jesus and Jesus' brothers. And sometimes they gathered in bigger numbers of about 120 people. We hear that they were constantly in prayer and that they also discussed all that had happened and its meaning, including Judas' death. And they went about choosing new leadership by this interesting method of casting lots, which makes me wonder that maybe without the Holy Spirit to guide them, they had to adopt some other choices. So what can we take from this? It made me wonder what this church of a few days old can teach us at Open Heaven, a more established church. We even have an aptly named Upper Room um, Evenings. And I'm wondering how we could follow the example of these early followers who didn't have an example or blueprint to follow other than the words of Jesus. I'm wondering if we could learn from them about waiting on God and being expectant on this gift of the Holy Spirit. Also to diligently follow Jesus' instructions to the letter and learning what it means to be constantly in prayer. Are we expecting and ready for his power? And are we open to telling other people about him, even those unlike us or distant from us? And how much are we committing our big decisions to God? Maybe not casting lots, because we are living in the next chapter of the story where we get to live in the reality of an encounter and a life lived with the Holy Spirit who can guide us and empower us supernaturally. So let's end in a, with a prayer. Dear Father God, Jesus and Holy Spirit, today we are expectant of and await you, both when we're together in the upper room times and when we're alone. Our ears are open to your instructions and we commit to following them obediently. We want to receive your power and we won't keep you to ourselves but we'll take your story widely to those who will hear. Thank you that you make sense of our lives and guide us. Amen.